Hey guys, before we get on with the video, please be aware that there is a lot of obscure information for the topics of this video. So there's going to be a fair bit of speculation in the video, which will mostly revolve around those who live in death, the Knight of the Black Knives, Godwin himself, and the Deathbed Companions. Background footage will show where I got the information from, so just keep that in mind. And that's it, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, back to the story. It happened an age ago, on the Night of the Black Knives, when a fragment of the Rune of Death was stolen. A scheme had come to pass, and the first of the demigods fell, the one known as Godwin the Golden. Godwin is the son of Queen Marika the Eternal, and Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. When Godwin yet lived, he was a famed dragon hunter for the Golden Order. He bested the ancient dragon Fortisax, but instead of slaying him, he befriended the dragon instead. It was through that friendship that the ancient dragon cult was created, and through his friendship with dragons, he created incantations for the dragon cult, which harnessed the very power of lightning and the power of the dragon. It is also speculated that he was the favored son of Queen Marika, and as beloved as he was, his death would be the catalyst that would cause the shattering. On a wintry night, a fragment of the Rune of Death was stolen from Malekith the Black Blade. This fragment was used in a dark ritual to create knives imbued with the power of death. The instigator for this heresy was an Empyrean known as Rani the Witch. A well-kept secret from the ears of the Golden Order, but should you confront Rani with this information, she would show no shame in admitting it. I see. Quite the sleuth, aren't we? Indeed, I am the witch, Rani. I stole a fragment of the Rune of Death and used it to forge the god-slaying black knives through fearsome rite. I did it all. But sadly for thee, the curse mark thou seekest is not to be found here. I have slain the body I was born into and cast it away. And it is upon that flesh the curse mark is carved. And why should I reveal that to thee? I performed the act not to bury the past, nor in shame of the deed. But all the same, thy begging compels me not a jot. The curse mark thou seekest is not here. That is all I will say now. Be gone. Although it is unconfirmed if it was also Rani that ordered the murder of Godwin the Golden, I do however believe that it was also by her scheme that Godwin the Golden perished. For Rani needed to circumvent the full power of the Rune of Death by having another demigod die at the same time as she. For all Rani needed to shed was her Empyrean flesh to free herself from the control of the Greater Will. As such, the Black Knife Assassins entered the capital with their concealing cloaks and with daggers infused with death. There they slew the Golden God. It is unclear how this power works, but by splitting the hollow brand of death, neither Rani nor Godwin would be granted a true death. Rani would die in body and Godwin would die in soul. This event would come to be known as the Night of the Black Knives. Before continuing, I understand there are holes in the plot if the Black Knives were working for Rani, but I will address this in a future video when it comes to Rani. What is of import here is that Rani and Godwin had died at the same time, but in different ways. But despite Godwin's soul being killed by the Hollow Brand of Death, his body did not die with it. As such, he did not get a true death. The golden epitaph was created to commemorate his death. It is a sword infused with the humble prayer of a young boy, likely to be Mikula the Unalloyed, as the symbol of the Halig Tree is shown when invoking the prayer. The prayer goes as follows. O brother, lord brother, 
please die a true death. But what does it mean to have a true death? In the age of the Erd Tree, death does not exist. For you see, the Elden Ring governs the laws of the lands between, and it can be freely altered depending on what runes are contained within the Elden Ring. Queen Marika the Eternal had removed the rune of death. As such, the law of death did not exist within the lands between. So how does one receive a true death? Well, in order to answer that, we must look to those who live in death. Creatures of undeath, whose souls are rejected by the Erd Tree. As such, they remain in a state of undeath. Their bodies decay and rot, and yet they live in suffering. When you visit certain catacombs with those who live in death within, you might find some death root. These are fragments of the rune that scattered through the earth tree's roots when Godwin had perished. These death root do not truly impede the souls of the dead, but rather they hearken unto the bodies of the dead, allowing them to rise once more. The souls themselves are rejected by the earth tree, but they believe that it is only a matter of time until they are hewn into the tree. And thus, the souls are patient, until the moment the death root calls them to live once again. This was actually a revelation learned by Roger, and he shared this information with us. I must tell you, do you know of those who live in death? The very notion of life in death defies the Golden Order. By Dee's account, these defiled fiends must be expunged. But truth be told, I seek the curse mark to save them. You may find this peculiar, but I discovered something in my examination of the Knight of the Black Knives. These souls have committed no offense. They have every right to life, only they happen to touch upon a flaw in the Order. Those who live in death are souls who have committed no offense against the Golden Order. According to Roger, they have every right to life, but they are denied such a right because they happen to touch upon a flaw in the Golden Order. What flaw this is though, is simply unknown. As such, they are denied a true death. A true death means death in body and soul. The body fades into runes and the soul is hewn into the earth tree. Only then can a peaceful, true death be attained. The other way would be to destroy the soul and the body with the sacred rites of the Golden Order, no longer allowing the soul to be reincarnated into new life. Godwin's soul was never hewn into the earth tree, and so his demigod body can never die. His soul was not destroyed by any litany of proper death though. As such, he can still be revived by a deathbed companion. His body though is but a husk. What truly contains his soul is the hollow brand of the death prince, which is split in two. But as the first demigod to die, his body is mutated into the Prince of Death, and he is the first demigod for those who live in death. The deathbed companions are tarnished from a place beyond the lands between. These maidens would attain the vigor of champions by staying by their side on their death, preventing their soul from being hewn into the earth tree, and once enough vigor has been attained, they would lay with an exalted noble and give them new life. This is an affront to the Golden Order. Fia, the deathbed companion, was one such maiden. She was exiled from her home for possessing the guidance of grace. For those who live in death are directly opposed to the Golden Order. As such, one who receives their grace is unwelcome in their home. This was not what Fia wanted. Fia was proud for her position as a deathbed companion. Despite her hatred for the guidance, however, this would bring her to the foot of the most exalted one, Godwin, the Prince of Death. One who will be able to restore the Order of Death and mend the fragmented Elden Ring with the mending rune of the Death Prince. If you recall earlier, 
I mentioned the hollow brand of death was split in half. One half is with Rani, who used it on herself in order to break free from her Empyrean flesh. And the other, surprisingly, was with Darian, or better known as D. Let me take this chance to talk a little bit about D. He and his brothers are hunters of the dead within the Golden Order. They are inseparable twins who found solace within the Order, who did not revile them as accursed beings, for they only have one soul but share two bodies. When one body is active, the other is asleep, which is why when D dies, his brother wakes and knows what happened. And if you ever visit his brother while D lives, you will find him in a deathless sleep. In any case, going back to the Hallowbrand, D was in possession of the Hallowbrand that killed Godwin, probably found by his brother as he was one who came face to face with the Prince of Death. Due to this, Fia had come to the Round Table Hold in order to kill D and retrieve the Hallowbrand. You might ask, how did Fian know that D had the Hallowbrand? Well, Roger came to side with those who live in death, after he found out the revelation we spoke of earlier, unbeknownst to D. Roger regularly lays with Fia as well. It was Roger that told Fia of the Hallowbrand, but it was also thanks to Fia that Roger knew of the location of D's brother. D's brother had come into contact with the Prince of Death, and I believe it was Roger who gave the dagger to Fia, the dagger that bore a curse of death. It was this dagger that we gave Dee that would ultimately kill Darian, allowing Fia to retrieve the hollow brand of death and finally renounce the round table to join her prince. Another interesting thing when you think about it, isn't it strange that Dee didn't know about Fia being associated with those who live in death. Well, I think he didn't even know Fia was in the round table hold. You see the bedchamber where Fia resides is not truly just a bedchamber when she occupies it. But it is a hidden temple for those who live in death. The Baldakin's blessing that we receive from Fia is a blessing of a temple hidden as a bedchamber, which numbs our sensations to bring us closer to death increasing our poise and granting damage negation in exchange for 5% of our max HP. A small price to pay for a nice hug. The other half of the Hollow Brand was still within the discarded flesh of Rani the Witch, which we find out thanks to Roger and we can retrieve it after helping Rani. Unfortunately, Roger dies before we can show him the other half of the Hollow Brand. The next time we find Fia, we find her with Godwin's grotesque form at the roots of the Erd Tree. The body has been twisted beyond imagination, no longer resembling Godwin in the slightest, and we see the curse of death and the death root emanating from the wound of the hollow brand. And at the foot of the prince's throne, we find Fia. Before we can even approach her, we have to fight her champions, with two notable appearances. Roger, who allied with Fia at the Round Table Hold, and Lionel, who passed away in the capital city at the side of another deathbed companion. Lionel had come across Fia before and swore to protect her as her father. After we defeat them, we come face to face with Fia, who asks if we are here to stop her, and if we still believe in the vision of the Golden Order. If we say yes, then she tells us that we have to kill her. But if we say no and instead hold her tight, she will find this peculiar. Here we can give her the other side of the hollow brand, and she is surprised but thankful. She gives us a tighter hug and gives her most precious gift, a gift a deathbed companion can only give once in their life. Finally, with the hollow brand complete, Fia can now lay with Godwin and give him new life. As an exalted demigod though, this new life is not as simple as a rebirth, but rather a new rune for the Elden Ring, a rune that will restore death within the lands between. Fia asks that once she lays with Godwin, 
that we are to receive the rune and become Elden Lord. However, things are never that simple. After we return to her once she lays with Godwin, we find that the rune is not born, and she is unconscious next to the prince. We are able to enter the deathbed dream at this point, only to find one last obstacle that bars the restoration of death. The Lich Dragon Fortisax Remember, Godwin had befriended this ancient dragon in his youth, and this dragon had been within Godwin the entire time, fighting the death curse from within. But the dragon itself was corrupted by the power of death, and turned into a Lich Dragon. The dragon prevents Godwin's foul rebirth, and so we must lay it low. A mere dragon of course is no match for the tarnished. As such, once we return from the dream, we finally find the mending room of the Death Prince. Contrary to appearance, Fia is not dead at this moment, only asleep. Once we leave and return, we will find Dee's brother, too late to prevent the room's birth. But he gives a powerful speech anyway. Good long look. See the wrath of the Golden Order. The Order's justice writ in blood. This is what's become of your precious witch. Naught but expired meat and bone. This is a proper death, O oh Prince. Look at this rotten hole. No more children can be got from this useless flesh. Behold, your mother is dead. <laughs> this is revenge, you witch. And you, you ghoul. This is the wrath of D. Ah, hello. The rotten witch is dead. The Golden Order unsullied. Now I can look my brother Darian in the eye. Honeyed rays of gold deliver my spirit. Darian, now I have no regrets. Honeyed rays of gold deliver my spirit. You can choose to kill him or not. Either way, he leaves after avenging his brother. You must now become Elden Lord and add the Mending Rune to the Elden Ring to restore death within the lands between. Or, you can uphold the Golden Order, grant Mikola's prayer, forsake the Rune of the Death Prince, allow Godwin his true death, and return to our home, bathe in honeyed rays of gold.